Thank you so much, Stephen, for being here. I am excited, been really excited and been waiting for this conversation together. Do you want to start by taking just a couple of seconds to tell us a little bit about yourself and exactly what you do? Yeah, my name is Stephen Morris. Um, I'm a retired Army veteran. I was in the Army for a really, 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 really long time. And What's that? Um, really, really, really? Uh, 16 years. Wow. So, um, yeah, I joined in 2001 and then, um, now I'm being an entrepreneur, running my own business, helping people, uh, scale their businesses and primarily in the leaders focused on leadership. Um, so yeah, that's, that's who I am. That's what I do. And I'm so excited and happy to be here. Oh, I'm so excited about that. Tell me, um, what made you like, what was the story leading up to how you got diagnosed? Um, so yeah, um, I guess I should have added that, um, I'm diagnosed with having ADHD and bipolar, um, not bipolar, I'm sorry, which I probably am bipolar, um, dyslexic. There we go. Um, but anyway, perfect dyslexic uh, moment to say bipolar <laughs> instead of dyslexic. I love it. <laughs> All for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, back when I was, uh, starting middle school, um, my teachers were just killing my mom practically um wanting her to take me to see therapists and get diagnosed and get on medication and my mom refused um she believed that it was the teacher's job to find a way to get to me and, and help me not dose me up on medication now i am not saying meds are bad but I'm saying they're not needed in every single circumstance. And um, for me, uh, you know, ultimately I did end up getting diagnosed when I was in the seventh grade. And, um, but my mom still refused medication. And then in the eighth grade, I had this amazing teacher. Her name was Mrs. Cunningham. She was a biology teacher. And she saw my problem. She recognized it. And of course, a biology teacher. I mean, what a perfect person, right? To, to see this. And she made, we had this hour long study hall every day and she made it so I could be her classroom assistant during my study hall. And I would go sit in her classroom and I would do my homework and she would help me. Um, basically, she taught me, well, oh, how do you say it? The, it starts with a P. I don't remember how to say it, but it's you work 25 minutes, take a break for 25 minutes. What is that called? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, she basically taught that to me, but instead it was you work on this homework until you start feeling yourself pulled away and shift focus to, oops, to a different homework. And that's how I've learned how to do my work throughout my, and I use that to this day. Like I'll work on something. As soon as I start feeling pulled, I, I divert my attention to a different project. And then that's how I finish projects because ADHD, like we're great at getting things started, but that finishing, oh man, now that takes power, <laughs> right? So I use that that technique to this day and it was all because Mrs. Cuttingham, bless her heart, um, recognized and took it upon herself to teach me practical things. And I've I've of course learned different techniques as I gotten older, but I'll be honest with you. I don't even consider ADHD to be a problem anymore. It's my superpower. It is, it is my, it is what makes me unique. It's what makes me strong and I fully embraced it. And I couldn't imagine living life another way. I absolutely love that. Like every aspect of what you said, starting from the beginning about where you're talking about your mom believing in you. Wow, that's a big one. And then that like not everyone needs meds. We could say that a little bit louder. And <laughs> like the whole process, like every step of the way, I'm just like, yep, mm -hmm. finding strategies that work with your brain instead of against your brain. Um, and just really, really being able to use ADHD like as your like it is a superpower and being able to use it for you instead of against you. I, I love that. When you were um, in the army, where did, where did you find it most challenging with your ADHD? <laughs> um, I think as most people with ADHD, in my experience, most people with ADHD tend to um, be very, uh, 
what's a I don't know how a political way to say it. Um we're very uh hard to shake, I guess you could say. Um one once we learn how to embrace what we are and you know function with it, it it becomes hard to shake us and so my drill sergeants through basic training and even when i got into the regular army with my units um it, it was hard for them to shake me which is a necessary process as you go through training um so i found myself at the at the receiving end of a lot of punishment because well like like all things like it's just like eh, is what it is and i move on and that that was not acceptable so um that that was pretty hard and then the army's not really centric when it comes to adapting to other people's learning styles so whenever i would implement my strategies i would get a lot of pushback a lot of times like that's not how we do things we do things this way but i mean that was great i can't tell you how amazing it was because it forced me to adapt to different ideas because up to this point I was stuck in a single this is how I do things and it forced me to be like okay now I understand I can do it this way but I can also adapt these other strategies and start really forming my own unique way to to make my brain work but it was a, a significant challenge in the beginning just because they don't understand they're not built to understand them. That's fine. Um, if you have ADHD, I go in the military. I won't, I would never tell you not to, if that's your calling, but just be prepared. Like they aren't going to adapt to you and that's okay. You're going to learn how to adapt to them in your own unique way. And it's going to be amazing. And it's going to make you stronger in the long run. Did that answer your question? I hope yeah, that answered your question. I, I love that so much because I feel like it's the hard truth. Um, people can be mad at the army and like say like why are they not accepting me and why are they making me work so hard and maybe but maybe when it puts um thousands of people's lives at risk and you're doing like really important things right like it depends what you're doing but like it not always can we just be adaptive like that and i think you you've shared really well how you've adapted to that situation and i think that when we when we we give ourselves higher standards we can rise to the higher standards no matter what our diagnosis is or what we consider our our like limitations are when we believe it's possible we will find a way to make it possible so maybe it's not going to be the same way and you may not get to that destination exactly the same way as everybody else and it may be more challenging for you um because of xyz but I think with a growth mindset and with that perseverance, then you will find a way. And like you said, it builds you instead of um, actually breaking you. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's go into a little bit your business. But first, what, what, what do you specialize in most? I specialize in helping entrepreneurs that are getting ready, that they have already started or are getting ready to start um, hiring. So they're getting ready to take that solopreneur business to the next level and they want to hire team members and start building a company culture um i help them through that process so they that they get it right the first time rather than building a company culture that's complete crap and then having to go back and fix it later i love that and i'm assuming that you got quite a bit of experience with that in the army 100 <laughs> percent yeah. So how do you um, see your ADHD really being able to help you uh, in your work? Um, so with my AD, so perfectionism is a huge thing for me. Um, so that that is uh, good and bad. Um, I promise I don't put out a product that's not as perfect as I can get it. Um, but it's also a hindrance because nothing is ever perfect. So, I mean chasing that 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 rabbit but um it helps me most because like i said i'm able to work fast right 
um, understanding one of the, one of the key things I came to understand is the longer something takes me, the more drawn away from it, I'm going to get over time. So whenever I get focused, like this morning, I was rewriting some copy on my website and it's like, I got to get this done within 30 minutes because if it takes me longer than 30 minutes, I'm off in left field chasing other squirrels and it's not going to get done till next week. And I need to have it done now. So it may, it forces me to embrace it and I have to work fast. Um, that would definitely be a big one. Um, multitasking. Look, you're never going to hear me say multitasking is a good thing. It's not. Um, but for people like you and I, multitasking is a necessary evil, right? I have learned, and I'm sure you have as well, to make multitasking work for us. And so that is another, I think, strong suit I bring to the entrepreneur game is I'm able to multitask like a like a Super Bowl champ, man. Like <laughs> I can, I can really hammer that home. Um, but when I say multitask, I don't mean I have multiple tabs open um, at the same time on my screen. I have one tab that I work on for, like I said, 30 minutes, and then I close it, go to the next project. And then halfway through the day, I go back. And that's what I mean by multitasking. It's not really working on multiple things at the same time. So, I mean, um, I think those are probably the the benefits of it. Um, and, and then just, it's also helped, it's forced, again, it's forced me out of my comfort zone uh, to learn new techniques, right? Like um, my office, unfortunately, has a freaking window and all the rooms in my house have windows. So I can't get away from being able to look outside, which horrible distraction um literally chasing squirrels sometimes <laughs> so i mean keeping the blinds closed uh when i really need to focus or need to focus um things like time blocking has become so important for me uh, to ensure that i keep doing what i need to be doing each day and i've really had to learn how to time block um setting clear and concise goals I've always done that, but it's never been more important to keep me on, on track and keep me where I'm, I'm trying to go. I absolutely um, love what you said, because it just continues to expand on working with your brain instead of against your brain. And I'll mm -hmm. be honest, when you were talking about your multitasking, I got scared for a second because we actually don't multitask we task switch. And like you said, then as you went on to explain of like opening all your tabs at the same time. You're tasking switching really well and really efficiently. And it is um, one of my favorite ways to work, especially when I'm um, not very focused. Like sometimes it's good, right? Like just block out a long period of time to focus on a task for a long period of time. But on days when I find is especially challenging, I like to have, I like put on timers for like 12 or 17 minutes and know that when that 17 minute timer rings then I have to go into the next task. So it's like what you were saying about like working really, really quick. Right. Um, and then you also don't lose the boredom and all the beautiful stuff. Um, but then we're, we're task switching really fast. Now I'm just gonna, while we're on this topic, I'm just gonna go in here a little bit. Even people who do have multiple tabs open at the same time, you are going from tab to tab. That means you are switching from task to task. You're not actually doing two exact things at the same time it's just going super fast that you feel like you're doing two things at the same time and that's why it's task switching um instead of task multitasking but i will like I learned to ask something you. new oh ah, yeah heard that before. No. <laughs> you do it you do it really well i like how you close the tab because some people will still leave the tab open and even if they set the time oh. for it they'll come back so i like that that's like that's really good task switching amazing I'm curious, um, what would you recommend to someone who is looking to build their team um, and if they have ADHD? Any specific recommendations in, in that field of building a team? Yeah, be open and honest, right? Don't be scared of it. Like it, it, it because, because if people don't understand this, we're going to come off as abrasive or unconfident or... You know, there, there are a million different spectrums of which people will see, view us 
whenever we just explain like this is how I am this is how my brain works and this is why I do the things that I do um a mutual acquaintance of ours Jeremy um he was talking about um Jeremy Nagel great guy he was talking about how he hates physical contact in the workplace right and it's like he needs to go, be open and honest with his people about it like look I get you just trying to be nice please don't touch me yeah. right this is why because otherwise he's going to seem abrasive and, and offensive to some people and so we got to be open and honest and like for me when it comes to my team it's like look like first the first thing I cover is dyslexic because I talk in reverse. Like I don't just read in reverse. I talk in reverse. Like I'll say, go left. I mean, go right. Like I'll say, do this. I mean, do that. Um, and so it's like, look, like I get like a lot of times my communication is going to seem kind of garbled. Just be patient with me. I'll get there eventually. And eventually you're going to be able to decipher what I mean. Um, once you, you learn and it's okay like i understand it's frustrating and i apologize and yada 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 but this is how i am this is what we're going to deal with uh same with my adhd like i hate 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 when i see people with multiple tabs open that is just distraction city even if you don't have adhd stop it um just work on one thing and then move on um so i mean things like that things i'll harp on like do you really need to do that um, I talk really freaking fast. Like I'm actually slowing myself down right now. So I don't talk so fast, but I, I promise I can talk a million miles an hour. And so these are things like, especially like whenever I get amped up and I'm like excited or frustrated or whatever the case may be, like when those emotions start flowing, then I, man, it's hard. To, I, I, I struggle to understand myself sometimes. Anyway, like, these are the things, like, I got to communicate this with the team. I got, they got to understand me exactly who I am, how I am, and why I am how I am. And that understanding goes a long way to build trust, especially when, when I'm being open, honest, and transparent. Like, look, th this is who I am. These are my perceived flaws. I put that in air quotes uh, because I don't believe uh, these things are actual flaws. But I guess to the common non-diagnosed person uh they they are considered a, a, a defect um but we're working on changing that stigma but um anyway <laughs> i digress um but yeah just being open honest transparent and it builds so much trust uh, i love that so much i love that so much i i think everyone whether it's adhd or dyslexia or any anything honest in life i always think people appreciate communication over anything right like most people aren't upset if um things didn't work out as long as they were communicated it's like when it wasn't communicated is where the real frustration happens um mm -hmm. and people usually want to be understanding and so when you can explain to them like i talk like this because of x then then it makes it a lot easier um, and then obviously for ourselves, I like to just like put it in there. We don't want to just limit ourselves by our, by what's happening and seeing if there's ways that we can work on it. Like you said, like earlier about like an army, like holding yourself to the higher standard and we can actually do stuff to make it a little bit easier for us and also ultimately for the people around us. Well, thank you so yeah. much, Steven. This was fun. Before we get to our final question, where can people connect with you and learn more about you? Yeah, just uh, you can email me. Um, I answer all my emails religiously. So you can email me at sjmorris at renowned, R-E-N-O-W-N-E-D, leadership.com. Um, or you can just go to netrenownedleadership.com and there's a connect uh, widget. Just shoot me a message and I'll get back to you almost instantly. Wow, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, final question. What is something controversial that you believe in? <laughs> I've already said it. Um, not everything needs meds, man. Um, chill the heck out with the meds. Um, I get the pharmaceutical companies need to make their money. And I get that the meds help some people, but 
I, man, if my mom had given in and medicated me, I would not be the person I am today because I wouldn't have learned how to deal with it. I wouldn't have learned how to turn it into my superpower. And I wouldn't have learned like how to adapt, like all these amazing skills that I've learned throughout my, my adult life and my, my childhood, like they have what they're, what's propelled me to where I am today. They're, they're what keeps me moving every single day. Uh, you know, maybe maybe a little bit more understanding maybe a little bit more patience before we just jump straight to medication and again i i know meds help some people some people need them i got it but man for for a lot of people i think it's 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 too much i'm in with you on that one massively drastically <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> well glad. thank you so much steven uh, <laughs> what i'm always scared to throw that out there because a lot of people are like oh no, we need the meds, but uh, that's hundred percent how I feel. And, you know, when it came to my own kids, it's like, it's like, no, nah, you're not getting medicated. Like you're going to learn how to deal with this. Like I did. Yeah, and, it's yeah. true. There are moments where it is more challenging, but that challenge um, is what makes us. Absolutely. Amazing. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Steven. This was awesome.